All right. Hey there, this is Bram Kanstein and you're listening to Bitcoin for Millennials. Together with guests on my podcast, I go on a journey to discover how our current financial system works, why it's flawed and why Bitcoin is the most relevant technology that you should understand and adopt. In this episode, I'm joined by Andy Thompson. He's the founder of Bitcoin Talent Co., the leading provider of recruiting products and services for the Bitcoin industry. With more than a decade of experience recruiting for some of the biggest names in tech, he's now focusing all of his time and effort to growing the Bitcoin ecosystem one higher at a time. And as someone who would love to continue his career in Bitcoin and at a Bitcoin company, I'm super excited to talk with him today. So uh, welcome, Andy. Thank you, Bram. Excited to be here. Yeah, man. Thanks so much for, for coming on. I, uh, I wanted to start by asking you, because I know you're a millennial too, right? Mm -hmm. Like, what is your experience educating our generational peers <laughs> well if i'm being perfectly honest i think i've given up on educating at least not taking every opportunity that i have to do so um and i kind of say that in jest but you know a lot of people have this sentiment now where you've been trying to tell friends tell family but at some point you know it's uh, if you don't get it yeah i don't know what to tell you kind of thing right so yeah, not not to give you a cop out answer here, but I, I think increasingly so. I've I've just I've continued to look inwardly, my immediate family, myself. What is what is my plan? What is our strategy? How are we kind of planning for the future and and you know staying humble, stacking sats, so to speak. Yeah. Um, when people raise questions, I'm more than happy to to speak and actually take the time to sit down with anyone. But um, yeah, I, I don't know if I'm alone in this, but I, I do find myself having uh, shied away from the uh, how do I say like unprovoked uh, education of <laughs> around Bitcoin, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think the, I think we still have probably the same enthusiasm, but but starting the conversation, like you said, I think I I also do less. Like, yeah. what what are would you say the main things that that people are struggling with to, I want to say like understand, but also kind of like to unlearn, right? I think there's a lot to yeah. learn, but there's also yeah. a lot to unlearn. Like, what what are things that that stood out to you? Yeah, well, I think the core of that is the fact that everyone. Everyone has their own preconceived notion, right? Everyone has, you know, whether it's right or wrong, their ideas of Bitcoin, right? So that's maybe why I think if, if I think about it, that's probably a reason why I've shied away now from just like jumping into a pitch, so to speak, like why Bitcoin, mm -hmm. right? Well, because why Bitcoin, everyone needs a different answer to why Bitcoin. And so if I do actually take the time to speak with someone, it's more about trying to meet them where they are, right? Um, you know, you've, you've heard it's only for criminals. Well, goodness, here's the retort to that. You've heard it wastes too much energy, right? You hear it's too volatile, right? There's all these different reasons that people will bring into the equation. And so maybe having your sound bites, you know, for each of those, uh, each of those concerns, let's call them, right. I think is, is an important strategy. Um, but if I had to say like, you know, common themes, if you will, for our peer group, right. Our friends, I, I think it's just, a an out of sight, out of mind kind of thing. I think there's a, you know, to some degree, people who have benefited right from the current system right maybe they don't foresee the need they don't they don't feel the fear of what can happen to their money right and let's i'm sitting here in silicon valley on the west coast of the united states right like most of my peer group they work in tech they um, have you know uh, well paying jobs things like that so this is a demographic that just doesn't feel the pain that is being yeah. felt in so many other parts of the world um how do you how do you tell someone they need someone when they don't feel the need for it yet? That, that's a big issue that I think comes up, right? So it's not even like having a a very staunch opinion one way or another against Bitcoin. It's like I just haven't had the need to even like be curious about it, right? And that's a sad thing, but I think that's the truth for a lot of people. Yeah, maybe in the Western world, right? Yeah, I think we're um, what is the circle where you are like um, un unaware of your inability, then you're aware of your inability. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and then you're un uh, then you're aware of your ability, and eventually you're unaware of your ability. Right. Like well, when you it's drive a like car, the, and you the don't bell curve think. meme, if you will. Right. Like, I'm an idiot. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm if it's the bell no, curve. It's, it's more the circle <laughs> that you go through. Right. Like, for example, uh, when you when you drive a car. Yeah. Like you're um, uh, like you're unaware of your ability. You're not you're not doing it on purpose. You're just you know you're you're just doing it without without thinking. Sure. And I think um lots of people are unaware of their inability to uh um well it's not inability it's a different word but like, you're, you're unaware you know, you know what i mean you're unaware <laughs> of of the of the potential 
you know, uh, things that can go wrong, right? You haven't felt pain yet. Yeah, exactly. This, I mean, th- this yeah. kind of comes into Bitcoin in, in many ways, right? Why why do people eventually become so staunchly Bitcoin only? Like myself, at least, it's because I, I had to feel pain in other areas. I mean, I'm, I'm not ashamed to say, of course, I went through my own journey of, of learning why Bitcoin is, is the only thing that matters, right? And part of that mm-hmm. journey, part of that learning, I, for me, at least had to involve feeling pain, right? And so that that is a, a an ultimate motivator, right? An ultimate educator is, yeah. oh shit, that hurt. Or oh shit, that like was scary. I don't want to do that again, right? Maybe people just have to go through that to some degree. Yeah, I think so. And I, I said it many times on this podcast as well. Like, the, um, like if you grow up in a Western country where money, quote unquote, just works, you know, you give a dollar or a bill and you get a bread or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, why, why would you actually question it? You know, so... I do think it makes a lot of sense, but what I find then interesting, you know, especially people from Western countries who get Bitcoin, um, I, I think myself included, and I, I cannot retrace my steps anymore, you know, like how how I ended up here. I mean, also, I sometimes I hear myself on this podcast <laughs> say things where like two years ago, I would have said, well, that's uh, that's uh, that's uh, pretty strong, you know, mm-hmm. but now <laughs> I'm here. Um, like the fact that we figured this out without actually... Um, you know, having a real life problem compared to people in Lebanon or Turkey or Mm -hmm. Argentina or, you know, name any country where, um, you know, people use uh, the the paper bills to uh, to create fires. I (laughs) I think that maybe the the, the big issues, the the big pains, like experiencing hyperinflation or literally having a, a, a dictator running your country, like, yes, of course, we as Americans haven't felt that. But the truth is there there are things, there are aha moments when you finally start going into the earliest stages of falling down the rabbit hole where you're mm-hmm. like, oh, no, this, this is important to me in my current setting, right? Um, yeah. yeah. Even though money has worked for us, we do still feel inflation increasingly so over the past few years. Like my grocery bill is more expensive. It doesn't mean that I'm destitute on the streets yet. Yeah, but it's right? not enough. It's it, not it, enough. Perhaps, right? right. Yeah, it doesn't mean yeah. I'm, I can't afford to feed my family, but but it's definitely, you know, you know creeping yeah. up a little bit, right? Yeah. And so that that's one of the things, maybe one of many aha moments that you start to have in your early journey, where it's like, yes, you know, I'm not. It's not an existential threat to me yet, but but that yet, when you when you when you solidify in your mind that yet is actually the the key word there, then maybe yeah. you have the motivation to get ahead of it. Like, who knows what could happen? Who knows how much yeah. worse they could get? Right. And so initially, like uh, your your upbringing or your um yeah your your youth or your education, like who who or what has been most influential. In shaping like your views about money, risk, wealth, like where where did yeah. you get your previous understanding from? Sure. Well, I've I've had no formal financial education, I should say, but yeah, you know, I, I think it is important to touch on just my my background, my foundation. I mean, uh, you know, my my upbringing, my childhood, all that. I am the son of a of a military father, right? My my mom and my dad had four kids. I was the oldest of four. My mom was a stay at home mom, given the fact that we moved every two to three years. Like it's very traditional. Uh, mm-hmm. military family, especially of the, the early 90s, right? You know, There's so many people like that. Um, we were able to make more than make ends meet, right? On just the one salary of a pilot traveling the country, right? Uh, that is definitely not the case today. So I think when I look at how great my childhood is, and I understand now how how hard it is for folks, maybe in a similar situation, like that's definitely an unluck, like, well, shit, what's happened to our money? Why is this impossible now? Um, my my wife and I today who are gainfully employed and make more money than our parents ever did, right? We're very fortunate for that, but it feels harder now with two kids than it did for my parents at four. So all these things you start to think of like, why why is it just, you know, not 30 years difference, right? Why is this is such an issue right now? Um, so that's yeah. shaped a lot of it, right? Um, also just the confidence, I guess you could say that my parents had back then, um, whether it was well-placed or not, but just the confidence that things are going to be fine. You know, like the money works, you know, the, the Navy is a stable job. So my dad never had those kinds of concerns. We always had healthcare taken care of, right? My dad knew he was working each and every year towards a military pension that, you know, for all intents and purposes would sustain him and my mother both for the rest of their lives, right? And even now they're starting to see like, well, shit, you know, inflation is outpacing our incremental increase percentage-wise for their retirement funds each and every year, right? So all these things that like, you know, they had the confidence, but our generation is increasingly seeing that like, no, it's it's a much different situation now than what they had. And, and I expect how they feel for their parents, right? I mean, imagine growing up a generation, two generations before that, how things have changed um, over those you know, uh, 100 years at this point, right? Yeah. And so how did you first become interested in in Bitcoin or or finance for that matter? Or like what was the dimension that you touched first with yeah. Bitcoin? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, two, two questions there, really. I mean, 
finance, yeah, when did I come interested in finance? I actually was an economics major in, in college, my undergraduate degree at least. So I, uh, yeah, to some degree thought, oh, well, business is probably useful or learning about money is probably useful. Um, I wanted to make money, right? So I thought that maybe that would be a good uh, entryway into, into a career. Um, most people went to accounting after that degree. I did not, right? So I already kind of detoured after that. But that was where maybe some of the initial learnings, if you will, of economics and monetary policy and all that started. Mind you, you know, at a university where perhaps what I was learning is actually very much in conflict with the truth, right? Or what we as Bitcoiners mm-hmm. know to be like, you know, a different opinion on monetary policy, right? Um, the Bitcoin piece, I mean, goodness, I first, I first heard of Bitcoin perhaps in, it had to be been like 2012, right? The initial like run up then was nowhere near ready to learn about it, right? Sadly, yeah, many people probably have this story. So cool, that's interesting, huh? All right, went about my way. Four years later, the same thing happened. Price ran again, oh my goodness, wow. So maybe a little bit more of the curiosity was was peaked. I put a hundred bucks on Coinbase in 2017, right? And then again, didn't touch it for a couple of years. So all these like, there were little like spikes in my recognition or awareness yeah. of Bitcoin. Sadly, none uh, at that time that drew me in all the way. Um, where things really started to change for me, though, I think was, uh, well, in 2020. I mean, many people have this story, right? Yeah, especially in March 2020. But for me, what was unique in my situation was I had just started my first business in January of 2020. So I just embarked on my oh, wow. entrepreneurial journey, you know, building a business. Yeah, two months later, right, the whole world just imploded. And so that was a unique time to be navigating you know, uh, business and you know, finance and all of that, right? Um, but I think, you know, I, I've said this in other forums, but I think the two most like radicalizing events are, you know, uh, becoming a business owner and becoming a parent. And, and those actually first happened for me around the same time. My first child was born in 2019, started business in 2020. So my mindset was already starting to shifting, perhaps unbeknownst to me in a way that made me more receptive to Bitcoin or at least wanting to understand what it, what it represented, what it meant. And so again, when March 2020 happened and flash crash to what I mean, what, sub 5,000, right? For some reason, I still can't point a finger to it to this day, but that for me was was the real catalyst to say, maybe I should pay attention. So yeah, I for the yeah. first time since 2017, you know, purchased Bitcoin. And from there, that really started my journey, right? That was probably a year, year and a half process of riding that crazy wave in 2021 and fortunately getting distracted by the shiny objects. I didn't feel the pain of the ICOs. I didn't feel the pain of the cycle before that, right? So for me, it was... I mean, <laughs> coins and NFTs, right? I mean, so shit. Yeah, like, yeah went through that process and I uh, yeah, learned my lessons the hard way around why would you ever, you know, take away from from you know, stacking Bitcoin, right? Um, yeah. And again, very violently, I would say ricocheted back to like, okay, yeah, actually, Bitcoin only is is exactly you know mm-hmm. where I want to be, and and that's actually what led to me starting this business. And yeah, you know, once you decide that you are all in on Bitcoin, you have to you have to you know, spend all of your time, all your brain power, and so closing that first business essentially to reopen it as our current business, Bitcoin Talent Co. Yeah, that's really kind of all happened very quickly in that two year span. Hmm. And so you do have a economics major, like did, did the question, uh, what is money ever get answered? Uh, no, we, we received the answer without being encouraged to ask the question. Right? And I think unfortunately that's the state of many uh, higher ed- education institutions at this point. All right, listen, yeah. I was 18, 19, 20 years old trying to get my college degree. Um, living the life of a college student, you know, however you want to take that in your average American institution, I was trying to get a degree, right? I, I really wasn't looking inwardly and, and yeah, kind of sad that that's the case, right? But I wasn't really asking those deeper questions. I was yeah. studying for the test, so to speak, right? So I earned my degree in economics, but coming out, especially like later, later when I started to become a business owner and thinking of like the whole, you know, how do I now view finances and trying to run a, a business efficiently, like, yeah. Oh shit. Maybe everything I learned actually wasn't exactly what I needed for the future. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I find it so interesting when you said, um, I find it interesting that, that you say like, uh, that what you learn about economics basically is an opinion, right? Like yeah. the, 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 the Keynesian, it was all theory, mind you, uh, everything is taught by philosophy a professor. <laughs> or theory. Yeah. Right. And so I, I do think, I mean, I, I, I don't have an economics degree. I, I have to say, I don't know exactly, for example, what Austrian economics is, but whenever I read about it or I read the principles, I'm like, yeah, that makes sense to me. Like that, yeah. it just makes sense. It's very rational. It's very logical, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, again, we're, I, we're being taught things in school, like inflation is healthy or a certain percent of inflation. I mean, so yeah. Exactly, right? So you don't doubt it because you don't, you, you think it's, I don't want to say a science. You don't, I, I don't think people think it's a science. It's just like, oh, well, I get taught that this is how it works or something. Yeah. Well, there, right? there's a fallacy and, and that's in that. That's why you that, don't question it. Sure. I, I think it's the fallacy of like economics being a 
how do I say it? it's, it's an applied field, it's numbers, it's math, right, to some degree. But and so because of that, maybe you falsely believe that everything you're you're learning in your yeah, math factual. focused yeah, yeah is, is yeah. factual. But but no, it's not the case, right? I mean, mm-hmm. goodness, like how numbers can be fudged in economic reports, and also just like you know, it's 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 not a science. Then. Ultimately, is what I'm trying to say. Like it's not in fact a science or a or a physics, right? It's math is the foundation of economics and, and financial theory, but there's very much opinion on the outside of that, how you're, you're leveraging the numbers, how you're leveraging the data, like the decisions you're making or the forecast you're making, right? One of the things I ultimately learned coming out of that degree too is like, you know, there's business owners who, you know, write the ships of their companies and people who navigate, you know, troubling mm-hmm. times with success. They are worlds away from your uh, higher education, like economics professor who is just spouting theory and actually hasn't put anything to practice ever, right? Has never seen the success or failure yeah, of exactly. theories, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, I, well, yeah. I do think m- maybe they use the numbers to obscure like the flawed theory, right? Like sometimes you sure. see. I mean, I find it fascinating when uh, you hear uh, Jenna Yellen say like the economy is sound and resilient <laughs> because uh, this number is uh, a plus yeah. from the other number. Well, that's because you know, she's more of a politician now than a of, financial of course, but theorist, I mean, right? <laughs> the whole point is that that people see a uh, plus 2% number yeah. and they think, oh, plus is good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm not questioning anything that's being great, told. Green, great. Here. <laughs> right? Yeah. And so I I, I, I like, uh, I think Safe Dean talks about it a lot, you know, that he says, no, economy is more like a social science or social mm-hmm. study. Like, what do people value? How do they exchange value? Right? Yeah. How do we trade? What is a real free market? You know, and yeah. um I, again, I'm the first to say I am not an Austrian school uh, economics uh, expert or too knowledgeable, but anything I read about it, it's like, yeah, it makes sense. Like people, if if two people have a certain service or a certain product and I'm the buyer of that product, mm-hmm. if I if people pick the, 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 the product that is, has more quality over the other one, yeah, that the other one just has to, you know, pack up their bags or, you know, well, throw it's, in the it's towel. very subjective it's, you and know, it's very it's, relative, right? I, I'm willing to pay 10 bucks for apples. You're willing to pay five, right? But neither of us have, in fact, alone set the price for apples, right? Yeah, it's no, always exactly. somewhere in between. But, right? but if, I, if I eat the apples from an or- orchard that, uh, I don't know, has poisoned the ground and I mm-hmm. get sick after one time, after I, uh, yeah, you know, yeah, whatever. Uh, I started a stupid example. <laughs> but I mean, more, you know, no, I feel it's actually, yeah, it's subjective, but, but it's... Um, and and it's like a never ending thing like you cannot mm-hmm. model it you know yeah. because it's human it's human uh, behavior and i feel that what what uh you know mainstream economics is using is using the numbers or you know certain policies to model that human behavior but if you agree that you know if um i, I like this thought currently you know like if 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 i would trade my finite time and energy for something that can infinitely be created like that doesn't sound like sound like a good decision yeah. right and just just that just that statement whether it's a dollar whether it's cigarettes in prison doesn't really matter <laughs> right like that is just already for me at least an interesting thought like i never thought about these things before it was just like okay you get an amount of coins or bills or a number on your mobile app of your mm-hmm. bank and okay <laughs> you yeah. know like it's yeah. it's that's the furthest most people go uh, and a very long time as well right like i mean uh you know there's there's people who never doubted it, who are 60 and never thought about this in their in, in their life sure and and right uh, as we know people who, who never will i mean there will be people who who never jump on board right never come come to bitcoin yeah. right um, yeah maybe you could argue that at some point everyone does because i mean tr- truly number go up and like yeah you know, uh, you're going to be way late, late, so mm-hmm. to speak, but everyone will finally come to it and everyone gets Bitcoin at the price they deserve and all these like memes around like people eventually kind yeah. of waking up to it. Like maybe That's there's true. some truth to that. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. So you mentioned, okay, starting a business, having a child, like was the, why was the aha moment, the big crash? I think it was just, it was just such a, such a shock. Like it, it, everything else was happening in the financial markets too. Everything was crashing. Right. And as I'm sitting here telling you right now, like I don't know if there's one specific reason why I decided to like move a bunch of chips into Bitcoin as, a, as opposed to being like, oh well, shit, maybe I'll just buy the S and P at this crash, right? Like, why, why, mm-hmm. why Bitcoin and not the other? Um, it just uh, something, you know, divine intervention, I don't know you can call it right, but really just kind of 
kind of finally woke me up to the fact. And again, I, I mentioned that this is this is very recently on the heels of those two radicalizing events, as I've said, you know, becoming a business owner, becoming a, a father, right? So the uh, like inherent shift in perception that you have or the viewpoints that are changing, I think maybe actually more so on becoming a, a parent for me, at least, was, you know, it's not about me and in my immediate future. There's there's actually something to build for the long term. There's people to care for for the long term. So you talk about like a low time preference thinking, right? You know, that that is... Um, I think inherently tied to parenthood and perhaps I was going along that path psychologically where Bitcoin just, uh, it it made more sense to me at that time. Yeah. And so I think just as with lots of other people, you, you touched Bitcoin uh, several times, Mm -hmm. well, like actually like you bought it, you held it, you read a bit about it, et cetera, but Basically, it took you eight years to really take the plunge. I think that's Can right. You, do, do you know, or have you ever thought about like what types of misconceptions did you initially have about this, or or perhaps personal beliefs, or yeah. um, maybe the lack of uh, I, I hear this a lot, you know, like the lack of trusting yourself in a sense, right, or mm-hmm. trusting your curiosity in a sense at a certain moment, like yeah. Can you yeah. can you share a bit about that? Like, do yeah, you... I mean, looking back on my whole journey, I I certainly was never anti Bitcoin, right? And so I think maybe there's a lot of people who are like this. It's it's not people don't buy Bitcoin because they're against it. Perhaps they just don't have the confidence, yeah, you know, to move mm-hmm. forward. And then I think there, there's a distinction there, right? And so so looking back, it goes from hundreds to a thousand, it goes from low thousands to twenty thousand. Like those were the two main runups that I that I was aware of what Bitcoin was, but didn't jump in fully yet, right? And so maybe when you see it go to 20,000, you're like, I'm too late. And when it crashes back down to 1,000, you're like, oh, well, glad I didn't do that, All right? So you have this like this fallacy you keep believing around like, man, I missed out. Oh, just kidding. Actually, I'm, I'm glad I didn't get caught up in that, right? And it happened twice for me. Also, I, I think there's probably some element of, I'm going to get this in 2012. I was you know, only a handful of years out of college as my early 20s, mid 20s at that point. Um, disposable income, you know, still building my career, like didn't really have the, the capital to be deploying at great scale at that point, right? Yes, you could buy 10, 100 bucks, whatever, but I just wasn't even a mindset of like investing at that point or saving, right? Yeah. Um, financially, things have changed 10 years later, right? Where maybe that was more something I was more mindful of starting a family, right? How do I build wealth for the future for us, for our family, that kind of thing, right? So there was a, a mental shift that happened in tandem with just, you know, some of the preconceived notions of Bitcoin finally being like cleared up in my mind, I guess. Yeah. And so, now that you adopted Bitcoin, do you have a moment or like a story where it like really impacted your life? Like how did it change your life? Uh, I mean, yeah, many ways. So one I could point to would just be like the continued, like <laughs> we get deep on this, right? But like the philosophical journey you go on or, or just the, uh, you know, how you reorient and anchor your set of values or maybe even not like reorient it's it's almost kind of coming back to what i remembered as a kid actually right you know again my parents were exceptionally frugal they say now i know why right you know one one salary you know uh, early 90s military pilot right like yeah not not a ton of money coming in right um but being grown up or growing up in an environment where we were always very frugal where you know things were we were made sure to be very fortunate for the things we had like of course that's who i was going to be and how i wanted to raise my kids as well so so coming back to that maybe when you first start making a little bit of money in your 20s and you're single or even when you're you know first first starting to date your future partner like maybe you're not as as frugal at that point i certainly wasn't right you're looking back i wasted money on things taking trips and this and that whatever right mm-hmm. so you come back to that that mindset where um bitcoin helped me to go even further along that right like oh my god well now that i start like yeah my my unit of account is bitcoin like Maybe I want to buy these $50 Levi's instead of a $200 pair of jeans, right? They're the same thing, right? But that extra 150 will go into Bitcoin. And I know that's going to be worth much more. By the time these jeans yeah. <laughs> wear out, that Bitcoin's yeah. going to be 100x, right? So you do start to like reframe every financial decision that you make. And I think that though it's a more broad example, it's, it's clearly one that's been for the betterment of myself and our family, right? You know, setting us up for the future in that way. Um, yeah. Also, just like financially, sure. I mean, yeah. It, there's a big debate on like, you know, never sell, never sell, never sell, right? But there, everyone has certain things that they need to do in their lives. There are certain uh, expenditures that will make sense for people to finally part with some sats, right? And during a big run up early on, especially when I went back in at, you know, 4,000, 5,000, it went up to nearly 70 in that crazy run, you know, back in 21. Um, yeah, I, I 
sold some at the top, right? And close to the top at least. And it was meaningful for us in a couple of ways, right? Um, maybe I just got lucky that the timing was right and it didn't keep running, right? But um, but yeah, I mean, there's there's actual like tangible effect that it has had on our on our family. Yeah. So you just mentioned philosophy. Like, do you, do you think Bitcoin is just a technology or is it? also a philosophy like lots of people talk about this i uh i will save my uh idea about yeah. it but how do you see it well well bitcoin is a technology to be clear it is right but that doesn't mean that you can't associate philosophy with it you know the the fundamentals that well let's put it this way i, th I think to some degree satoshi's philosophy right his fundamentals him her them whatever right the fundamentals that were top of mind when wanting to create this pristine asset, right? You know, writing the wrongs of the fiat world, writing the wrongs of just how banking was done in, in the early knots, right? Um, that was baked into it. So it's a technology to be clear, but I think it is, it has some natural association with certain ways of thinking. And you see that now. I mean, some of the biggest Bitcoin proponents do often agree on many things, whether it's Austrian economics or just the value of sound money versus fiat money, right? I mean, there's, there's a lot of things that people find in common naturally because of Bitcoin. So yeah, I'm not sure if that's explicit enough of an answer, but it's it, it's a technology in that it's you know uh, well thought out you know short lines of code right that that have survived thus far, uh, but from the value that people have been able to derive from Bitcoin, we can just certainly associate or tie that to many ways of thinking, right? Yeah, yeah, I agree. I I like the philosophical angle of, of Bitcoin because I think. It, if it's a technology, it's it's just just quote unquote. It's just a tool, right? And so if you if you believe that money is a technology to exchange value with each other, like what mm -hmm. does the perfect engineered money actually accomplishes? For, like what yeah. is the output of that, right? Yeah. Like where where do we end up if we use perfectly engineered money that no human can mess with right like yeah. what is what is happening now and well and, and bitcoin is the yeah. result of significant technological advancement over time i mean that that's maybe also, a, yes, one yeah, of the yeah. easiest things Agreed. that people yeah, yeah. Uh, misconceive about bitcoin it's like oh well if if you come from a tech mindset i see this in my world a lot right like people who are mm. otherwise incredibly intelligent and, and do understand technology um can i uh, mistakenly you know look past bitcoin it's like oh great well that was just v1 like what else are we gonna do solana is super fast right? exactly it's like, this yes. there's always technological advancement so everything that's created does get better over time but but no in fact this is perfect from day one that's a very very hard thing for technologists if you will to wrap their yeah. head around right but this the truth is, as we point. said you know bitcoin yeah. is is the almost the culmination of decades of technological advancement related to cryptography um uh, you know kind of public private key pairing i mean there's uh, I, I i'm not a historian on bitcoin by any means but i yeah. know obviously all of the over time the advancements that were made by many you have people. this nice graph right oh, that, yeah. that you see like all these publications exactly all these, all these yeah. but um but but i definitely agree with this i uh, recently talked to fred Kruger, and he said like uh, technologists will view bitcoin as like the, well this is probably the aol the aol of yes you know <laughs> Uh, cryptocurrencies or blockchain mm -hmm. currencies, whatever, right? But I think they fail to forget, and this is what Jeff Booth uh, also shares a lot, right? It is, it is more a protocol than it is a technology, yeah. right? And if you look at protocol, I would say like no, no there was no, you know, TCP/IP, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. still here, IMAP for emails and all these things, like. Um, and so if you view it as a protocol and you understand it's a protocol, it's just a set of rules that people can choose to follow. And mm -hmm. these rules are immutable and you you can prove that it's immutable because every 10 minutes, the same set of rules gets accepted by, you know, a majority of the computers yeah. Yeah, checking that... if, if, if the rules are still there, right? It's exactly but right. It, once you understand that it's a protocol, then you also understand that crypto is technology right like they take solana says oh i'm gonna be faster than bitcoin and there's these all these other things but but they 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 wrongly view bitcoin as a technology and they mm -hmm. try to improve on a technology but you cannot um how they say like you cannot invent or discover discover is a better word i'd say like you cannot discover finite digital scarcity 
again, right? I think it's Fidelity who says you cannot discover fire again or the wheel. Right. You cannot do like there is there is no other fire, right? And once you see that, then you understand that okay, if Bitcoin is a protocol that is supported or well, I'd say enforced by technology, the technology makes sure that you can trust the protocol forever and you you do not have to trust other humans, right? Then you will also understand that all these technology attempts, you know, crypto, they are attempts by startups who have a token that fuels whatever the system is that these startups want to create. And that is just such a different thing than um, what Bitcoin is, right? And I love that idea uh, or like that illustration, basically, because that is, I think, what sets and shows that Bitcoin is different than crypto. But also back to the philosophical part, right? Like what um, uh, what I like is that if we have a protocol for money that no one, no human can change, right? No human can corrupt it. They can try because it's open source and it's been tried, but nobody mm -hmm. wants those mm -hmm. versions of it, right? So if we have a technology that's incorruptible and we can use it to exchange value with each other, it will help us solve our innate corruptibility that we all have when we employ broken money, like mm -hmm. soft money, money that's easy to create and manipulate and all these things. And that will make the value exchanges between us way more valuable, actually, yeah. right? To go back to the example of, uh, did I say cakes? No. Oh, apples. We said apples, yeah. right? But like, I don't know if apples is a good example, but if, if there's two people who do the same thing, you know, they uh, build cars, whatever, right? If if that what you get rewarded with is the best money to ever be created, then you have to deliver value in order to receive that money, right? And mm -hmm. so that will create real competition, real yeah. free market dynamics, and also the person who wants to create the inferior car will eva well will hopefully quicker realize that this is not his or her thing, which is totally mm -hmm. fine, right? And then you go on yeah. to do the other thing. Yeah, and I like that because a lot of people. And we'll, and we'll talk about your company, right? But a lot of people, they have jobs that they don't like or they have a, a company that they just started, I don't know, like a, a bakery or a cafe or whatever. Like they, they struggle with what they started with. And it's because people get stuck in a certain loop while actually you should have more freedom to explore, you know, what am I here to do? How can mm -hmm. I add value, you know? Yeah. And um I think like the current system of money doesn't help people create that time to actually figure it out. You know, like yeah. who, 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 nobody has a clue and everybody's winging it. Right. But um, yeah, we should yeah. have the time to figure out like, what I, do I mean, we listen, have I, to add? Bitcoin without question will have a positive effect um, on humanity. Right. And, and just so many of the ways of thinking institutions, how business is operated. Like, yeah, it's, it's nothing but a net positive. Right. I do want to, caution myself from being too optimistic about some utopia, right? Like Bitcoin doesn't eliminate um, malice. It doesn't eliminate, you know, bad actors. It doesn't like, it makes it harder perhaps in many ways. It certainly makes it harder to, to fudge the system. But listen, like, you know, on a gold standard, there is still crime. There's still financial oh, people crime. People will try now, of right? course. Yeah. yeah, no, of course. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I want to, I want to live in that utopia, but I think we as Bitcoiners obviously need we need to be practical about the the world that we're heading towards. Um, we need to see around the corners of the impending, you know, concerns and issues. And, you know, there's this statement obviously made many times, you know, something to the effect of like, Bitcoin is not guaranteed, right? By by no means is it guaranteed. So it's, hmm. you know, simply like stacking and holding and, you know, sitting, sitting at home, like that, that alone will actually not help Bitcoin get to where it needs to go. So, you know, proactive, forward thinking, um, mitigation of of risk i think is, is something that needs to continue to happen across many uh arenas whether it's business finance law right yeah there's there's a there's a lot of things ahead right that we need to obviously be you know not not scared for or worried about just um we need to expect that to come and, and be prepared for that too yeah so what's your preferred way to explain bitcoin <laughs> if you would like talk to a novice person like what how, how where would you start yeah. So as I said before, I'd love to meet people where they are. Like, what do you think Bitcoin is? Or what does it mean to you? But if you had to give like my, you know, what I think the most important pieces are, um, I mean, it is the most pristine form of money, right? It is incorruptible. It is perfectly finite. Um, it is 
uh, 100% predictable in terms of its issuance cycle from today to the end of time, right? So all those things are like the foundation of all the other questions that someone may raise. Okay, well, why is this better than the dollar? Well, let me tell you about the dollar and it's yeah, declining mm-hmm. value yeah, relative, certainly yeah. relative to, to yeah, Bitcoin over time, right? Um, let me tell you about its portability over time and space, physically, digitally, right? I mean, there's nothing in the world that has ever been able to accomplish that, you know? What would you argue is the best money before Bitcoin? I guess gold, right? You know, gold is certainly not finite. Gold is incredibly hard to 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 you know tr- you know take with you. You know, transiting mm-hmm. gold across borders uh, damn near impossible, especially when there are um, you know <laughs> uh, bad actors at borders and letting you in <laughs> things like that, right? So those are some of the points that I think are the most important to hit on, of course, when you, when you think of why it's going to be the most impactful you know, form of money that we can use moving forward. We're increasingly living in a digital age too, right? So uh, the, the gold analogy does get tired, I think, at times, but, but it, it holds weight. And when you think of like, okay, well, if, if we're choosing gold to Bitcoin, then like we just don't live in an analog world anymore. This is digital. Yeah. So we need, that, we, need that, um, we need the positive qualities of gold to both be improved, but to also be able to live on a digital standard, right? Yeah. No, I think the digital argument is uh, really solid, right? Like ev- everything is digitally engineered, but yeah. not money. Yeah, yeah. And increasingly so. I mean, we talk about all the uh, interplay between Bitcoin and artificial intelligence. Like that's going to be a fascinating part of our, of our mm-hmm. near future here, right? I mean, yeah. it, it is the only money that can, that can anchor you know, the, the abundance that we'll see through AI. Yeah. So your company... Bitcoin Talent Co. Here you you help Bitcoin companies find talent. Can you share a bit about like the industry? What are interesting companies, and um, how how are you seeing it grow? Like, what's your view of the of the Bitcoin uh, ecosystem now? Yeah, I mean the job market to to you know say it plainly is absolutely picking up right now. Uh, I think across all industries, but but very much so here in Bitcoin. Um, price runs do kicked off that that interest right more eyeballs on the space more interest more curiosity such that people eventually want to work in bitcoin and then of course bitcoin companies who have been you know operating and and um kind of surviving bear markets they now have have you know free cash flow and excess you know treasury funds to spend on hiring the right teams i'll always caution them to not go and, and go and spend all that money right away like yeah the the, the immediate like downstream effect of of um financial success should not be spending all that on headcount, right? But nonetheless, people are finally growing their teams. They're having larger audiences that they need to, to service anyways, right? Which you know, require larger teams anyways, right? So in a nutshell, yeah, the, the jobs market is picking up significantly at this point. A theme of this market too that I think is really exciting, um, maybe not the case with previous cycles, is just the diversity of opportunity available in Bitcoin or specifically at a Bitcoin company, right? Maybe in early cycles, uh, technical chops were uh, yeah, paramount, right? Everything was... Uh, very much a, a technical project, you know, developers, engineers working together to, to build the earliest stages of Bitcoin products and eventually companies. Um, but those companies are maturing now. So while engineering will continue to be a need for companies of all shapes and sizes, they're now augmenting that with non-technical talents. I mean, everything from sales to marketing to your more corporate functions, you know, finance, legal, HR, accounting, um, all of these roles I've seen uh, with with companies at this point. So someone who's curious and, and finally deciding to, to jump into Bitcoin, at least to work in Bitcoin, there should be no reason, right? At least from a skill set standpoint alone, no reason why you shouldn't have an opportunity. Now, of course, you know, best candidates win and in interviews, yeah, they've got to go through all that process. But generally speaking, every discipline, every type of background will soon have a home in, in Bitcoin, which I think is exciting. Beyond that, another thing that I think is, is something that I'm really... Um, it keeps getting excited. I'm excited for it, but I'm also encouraged to see this this like migration into Bitcoin of more traditional organizations, right? I mean, obviously all the ETF issuers, like that's a that's the biggest one we can point to right now. Traditional finance companies who have been poo pooing on Bitcoin for you know for yeah, its whole existence are <laughs> leading the charge now. We can debate about whether or not it's good or bad or what it means for Bitcoin, but nonetheless, like those companies are here and they are at least saying the right things and, and they're yeah, you know, they truly are focusing on Bitcoin, you know. Yeah. And so the theme to pull out of that is. Uh, Bitcoin weaving itself into every corner of of yeah business today. Um, we often hear the analogy of like you know every company had to become an internet company or become a software company. It's true, and though it's cliche, I mean that is absolutely happening with Bitcoin. And so for us as a company, our opportunity is to yes you know fulfill the needs of the obvious Bitcoin companies and the companies that we've been supporting you know, over the past year plus. But increasingly to support you know, the traditional finance companies who genuinely want to build a Bitcoin team or a Bitcoin product, the SaaS companies who understand that 
maybe payments over Lightning Network are, are a huge value add to their business and how they operate. Um, e-commerce businesses, we can go on and on, like all different, you know, uh, all different like corners of, of technology today, like Bitcoin will weave itself into that. And we will be there to support the hiring of the experts who can help build these teams and these products for those companies too. Yeah. So what are, um, what are companies that you find interesting? Can you share a bit about that? Sure. Um, I don't want to uh, cherry pick from our clients. They've all been very interesting in many ways. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I, I think what's, um, if, if I can say the theme that I'm most excited about without singling out any one company, the theme I'm most excited about is this idea of, Bitcoin has like the magic behind the scenes. Um, of course, mm. we will continue to see um, innovation related to custody solutions, you know, better exchanges. I mean, you can't really innovate too much on like the idea of, of a, an order book and like buying Bitcoin and having the lowest spreads with respect to your competition. Like, sure, we'll continue to innovate on that, but not like significant innovation. What I think is going to be interesting again is like novel use cases for Bitcoin, maybe not even being obvious, right, but being used behind the scenes, whether it's the benefits of payments over lightning and you know ability to mitigate chargebacks and things like that right or thinking of um security applications for bitcoin as a protocol of course there's the financial piece to it but thinking of like um you know identity and, and security and uh you know, proof of of personhood if you will to some degree i mean you kind of get lost in like other crypto schemes when you think of of those terms but nonetheless i think bitcoin can have interesting applications to digital security and 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 proof right you know trustless proof right yeah. um so those are the companies that I'm kind of keeping an eye on, the ones that are starting to innovate in that space. I think it's also where the vast majority of like financial opportunity is because a Bitcoin company who advertises himself as a Bitcoin company selling a wallet or exchange, whatever, your audience is really Bitcoiners and only Bitcoiners, people who are already looking to leverage the service, right? But if you have a product that can benefit everyone, they don't need to be interested in Bitcoin or curious about Bitcoin or even like Bitcoin to know that behind the scenes bitcoin's making the product that you're buying yeah you know, all that bet all that much better like that's that's a huge kind of unlock i think for the industry yeah so what are what are some industries you think could be revolutionized to buy bitcoin i i often laugh about like fintech probably whatever you want to call fintech you know it's what what is fintech sure there's like digital companies that are yeah facilitating easier ACH payments, but that's still an ACH payment, right? It's like lipstick on mm. a pig. So I often laugh exactly. like yeah. FinTech <laughs> is so point. revolutionary. It's like FinTech is, is nothing. It's just like that next like incremental step forward and like the old technology of decades ago, right? And so <laughs> I, I make that point to say that like true FinTech is Bitcoin, right? And so I'm, I'm curious, I'm, I'm uh, optimistic to see companies that have been in the FinTech landscape, if you will, to actually start leveraging Lightning Network for, for payments and transfer of value, things like that, whether it's like payment processing as a service for other you know, companies or, or institutions that are actually building their own kind of um, in-house uh, uh, you know, leveraging of Bitcoin to make them stand out from their respective competition as well. Yeah. So I think most millennials who are listening probably already like started a career in a certain space or industry. Like what can or should they do to make the jump and continue their career in Bitcoin? Well, what steps can you take? I think first making that interest known. I mean, listen, I'll, uh, of course, you know, speak to our product and what we can offer. If you're looking for a job in Bitcoin, you should be signed up on our platform. You know, we are continuing to innovate and, and add more functionality for uh, job alerts, you know, making sure the visibility into everyone that we're working with is there on the platform, letting you apply. So obviously, you yeah, know, come, come express interest. Yeah. Um, beyond that, the steps you can take, I, I think there is something to be said for, you know, the, the, the Bitcoin tenant of proof of work, right? You're getting out there, you know, making sure that what you've done is represented resume is step one, but beyond that, what can you do? Can you start a podcast? Can you start writing on Twitter? I, I can name tens, twenties, hundreds of people, right. Who have gotten jobs over the past several years, just because of the recognition on Twitter. Right. I mean, I, I, our business included one of our co-founders. I followed him on Twitter, was very interested in the content he put out, and here we are working together, right? So this this is, it, it means something and it's helpful, right? Um, I'm sure your uh, networking opportunities continue to increase, Brahma, as, as the show grows as well, right? So, yeah, uh, maybe some people are shy or less less interested in, in putting themselves out there on a podcast, but there's some venue, there's some forum that you can do to make sure that people are aware of both your interest in Bitcoin and the contributions you're making to the space to start, right? Yeah. So what's your timeline for the for the future for Bitcoin? Like what what are things that you are looking forward to or what would be big signals for you that would validate like more adoption 
and acceptance. Continued nation state adoption, um, continued like Fortune 50 companies holding Bitcoin on the balance sheet. I mean, this is where you get the, the real sticky like adoption. You know, Apple doesn't finally decide to put a significant chunk of their cash holdings into Bitcoin to then sell in two years, right? You know, I think when 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 those actions are taken, like they're in it for the long haul. El Salvador's obviously all of a sudden not going to like backtrack on their Bitcoin strategy, right? So these like these actions that. Um, are a long time coming, right? They're, they're, there's a lot of lead time before finally taking that action. Once it happens, like it's a huge domino that falls um, and those speed up, you know? So it's, you think of the nations who maybe have more to gain, less to lose, vice versa. Like we're still in that, you know, uh, that sect, right? Where that's where we're seeing uh, nations adopt it. But once you get to like G8 nations, goodness, I mean, once once we're there, right? And they're, they're uh, giving the stamp of approval on Bitcoin, and that's a huge, huge psychological, you know, uh, uh, hurdle crossed, if nothing else, but but really just impactful for its, um, yeah, just its future kind of like success. Yeah. What do you think about America selling again for DK Bitcoin? Like, is there? I don't know if you're a patriot uh, in that sense, but like, yeah. what's what is going on there? I, I mean. What's going on? I have no idea. I don't know who's making that decision. I don't know who's running the the Bitcoin strategy. For it's the also US not State that Department. much. <laughs> it's not that much, right? Yeah. In dollar yeah. terms, so it's it, yeah. It's. I mean, when you have a uh, skyrocketing debt that's <laughs> running away, you may be forced to clip Bitcoin when you uh, wouldn't otherwise have wanted to. Obviously, we're nowhere near making a dent in that. It's kind of a joke to say this, but yeah, there's clearly other um, other priorities at play. Um, It'll be a regret down the road, of course. I, I I wish, you know, for for the sake of our of our country and the future of our nation, with respect to others who do adopt Bitcoin and the strength that it gives them, with respect to our declining strength. Like, yeah, there's a lot of arguments to make as to as to why we should be just holding, right? But um, yeah, who's making the decision? What they're thinking? I've goodness, your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> <laughs> Are you following this in any way, or not incredibly closely? I uh, that's another thing when you talk about the. Um, you know, maybe taking a step back from actively trying to educate everyone I meet on the street. Part of that is also just really tuning out all the noise. I I, I don't care as much for, for business purposes, right? Because it's relevant to know this being in the industry. Like I'm aware of when the ETFs were launched. I'm aware of these things that happen, right? But I'm not really like waiting with bated breath on any of these kinds of events anymore either. Um, I, I've decided I'm all in. Like, I, you know, I'm going to be working in Bitcoin, you know, for for as long as I possibly can at this point. Um, I'm dedicated to making this business be as sustainable and as successful and add as much value to Bitcoin broadly, but obviously to all organizations operating in Bitcoin. Like that's my focus, right? I'm, I'm not trying to, to spend too much brain power on wondering why people are or are not doing things. I just have the confidence in, in my decisions and, and strategy at this point and that's my path forward. Awesome. All right. I'll ask you the last question and <laughs> I ask everyone the same question. What's a core belief you will never let go? Mm. My God, I should prepare this one. A core belief that I'll never let go. Like related to Bitcoin or, or otherwise, I would say, right? Whatever. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, everything has to be anchored in, in family. Yeah, I, I'm fortunate to have come from a, a large family. Like I said, I'm one of four, the oldest of four. So I already had like that built in, like taking care of my younger siblings type thing. Family is the only thing that's there for you. I've, I've seen that time and time again. So yeah, we can talk about how we want to save in Bitcoin, set ourselves up for the future, hopefully get rich. Some people still have that motivation, right? But like at the end of the day, the only thing that's really going to be there forever is, is your family. And we can get you know, super sentimental on this. It's a bigger topic for me now that, that my family, my young family is growing as well. Um, everything I do is is with them in mind and for them at this point. And so, yeah, but always, always keeping family close, always, um, yeah, assuming positive intent with family members, always uh, uh, putting them first, I think is going to benefit you in the long run. Love that, man. Thanks for sharing. Um, I will link to your profile, link to Bitcoin Talent Co. website so people can sign up. So definitely sign up if yeah. you're interested to uh, continue your career in Bitcoin. And um, yeah, man, thanks again for your time. Love this conversation. And I appreciate uh, we'll be it. in touch. Yeah, thanks, bro. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, it would be amazing if you could rate, review, and subscribe on the podcast platform of your choice. It will help us educate more millennials on the importance of Bitcoin. You can follow and connect with me on Twitter. I'm Bramke, that's at B-R-A-M-K. And if you are or know someone who has an interesting perspective on Bitcoin that's worth sharing, hit me up. 
I read and reply to every single message. I appreciate your support and hope you'll be here for the next episode. Thanks for listening.